just starting to work with Cisco routers and switches, or aiming for your first certification exam? Well, let me show you the top five CLI commands that I use on a daily basis. All right, every single time I touch a router or a switch, there's always gonna be certain commands that I am going to end up typing in, and I wanted to show you pretty much the top five that I just about do every single time that I have to access a router or a switch. So here's my favorite top five, I would say. So the first one here is gonna be show IP access list. As you learn how to create access lists so that you can actually permit or deny access in or through that router, you want to make sure you have this command down. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look here on router one and actually type in show IP access dash list. And when we do so, we can actually end up seeing not only the idea of extended access list, which I have here, but if I also had standard access list, it would show me that as well, and every single access uh, entry uh, that we also have, and the details behind it. If traffic is going through, it can also show you how many times this particular list has actually been hit by showing you the numbers of times over on the right-hand side where that would be, especially if you have the log command here. So this is one of my top ones after I configure an access list. I want to verify that it's working, I always do something like this, and I do the show IP access, uh, show IP access dash list command to help me out. So let's take a look at the fourth one. Now, our fourth one is one that you're actually going to get uh, used to actually, of course, running just about every single time after you configure routing. And this is going to be true whether you're configuring static routing or, of course, some dynamic routing protocol like OSPF or EIGRP or RIP or even BGP, but for us here, I just wanted to show this very simple command that shows everything that we have in the routing table on a router. So on this one, if I type in show IP route, this will of course show you the codes that actually give you a lot of information so that you can interpret what the routing table looks like underneath. It can even tell me whether certain things actually are set in the routing table, such as the gateway here, okay? Also with the coding, I can see I have connected routes. I have an OSPF inter-area route. I also have redistributed routes here that are also showing up and even local and other, other inter, excuse me, other uh, inter-area routes as well. Along with that, of course, are gonna be the details behind the subnets, the metric, uh, or excuse me, the administrative distance itself, along with the metric and how I get access to them and how long this route has actually been available for and of course the interface that I can find that route off of. So this is one of my favorite commands, especially since I set up routing, I wanna verify that I am getting access to those routes. This is one of the very first places that you should go to find out all the details and the information for. So let's head on over to number three. So the third favorite command that I have is gonna be show IP protocols. Now I use this command when I am not sure whether or not the routing protocol has actually put itself in place the way that I think it should. And the reason why I need this is because sometimes the routing table doesn't show up. And I actually can kind of try and figure out whether it's a connectivity problem or an issue, but the easiest way is to verify whether or not you actually have configured, well, the uh, routing protocol itself. So if I type in show IP protocols, then this will actually show you the ones that are actually here or not. So at the top, you have a routing protocol is an application, which is not kind of the generic information, but underneath where you see routing protocol is OSPF1, we of course can see all the details. Outcoming, uh, excuse me, outgoing update filter list, incoming, the router ID, the number of areas in this router, okay? And of course, even normal stub and not so stubby areas, as well as, the routing interfaces that are actually now, you can see that these have been explicitly configured. And of course, where is the information coming from across my entire uh, network here to give me the information on my router and even the default administrative distance that we see. Now, you can always actually kind of use this as well just to verify, but you can get a lot more information as you're actually not sure whether you've configured it on the correct interface or not so this is a very handy command to make sure that you actually have. Like I said, just about every time I'm actually working with router, this is one of my go-to commands as well. Let's take a look at number two now. So the second one 
is by far probably the one that I type, I'm going to say two to three times more often than even the first three that I showed you. So this is show IP interface brief. Now this one has become this point here where when I do basic configuration, when I'm setting up a lab environment, I need to verify that I generally have, of course, not only the interfaces that I'm going to be using, but it also, of course, shows me the IP address that I've configured on there, on them, and then whether or not I've actually turned them on or not. In other words, issued the no shutdown command. So I can type in show IP interface brief. And if I do so, that will give me a very short summary of the interfaces that are currently configured right now that I have, and even the one that I don't have an IP address assigned for. That may be the one that's causing me issues. I, of course, can see the IP addresses and the method, and notice that these are actually going to be manually set, but I can configure them for DHCP as well, but I can see all that here, and then, of course, the status and the protocol. I'm always looking for the up-up. If I see something that's an up, down, or down, down, then I know I need to go to that particular interface to help me to begin troubleshooting what I need to. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about my favorite uh, command that I'm actually going to uh, tell you about, which is one that uh, right here is called logging synchronous. Now, logging synchronous is not a command that really displays a ton of information like the show commands that I've been showing you but it really helps out when your screen gets overwhelmed with information. So let me kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? So right here back on router one, if I can actually do a debug, I'm gonna do IP OSPF uh, here. Uh, actually, let's just do IP packets and see what happens, okay? So, oops, I'm lying to you, IP packet, there we go. So on IP packets, start noticing that the screen is actually starting to show some data that's popping up here. But notice that the command prompt itself is not actually right here. Now I can press enter and get out of it, but notice it actually continues to kind of flood the screen a little bit more. So even if I start typing in the command that I need, notice it actually interrupts the command there, but I'm able to actually see it happen, okay? Now, with logging synchronous, since I'm connected in using Telnet, I need to go into the line console, so I get into my global configuration, line on zero, and then from here, I can actually do logging, oops, if I can spell it, logging synchronous. Now, normally we can actually, of course, oh, I said uh, on, I'm actually in the telnet, so I need line VTY zero space four, and then it's here I can do logging synchronous as well, okay? So that way it would actually do the same thing, but going across Telnet. So the first one was a console. That was my uh, particular mistake. All right, now if we go back and we type in IP, actually not IP, debug, IP packet. Now, what should happen instead is we should start noticing at the bottom edge of the screen, it's repainting the R1 prompt for me. So I never have to worry if I'm actually gonna get overwhelmed by what the screen output's gonna be, because it's always gonna constantly be right here. I can just type in un, and notice I'm actually doing it slow so that you can see it. No matter what happens, right, if I continue to talk, it actually shows me where I left off. Undebug all, oops, I even misspelled. Debug all, and you of course can use abbreviations. And that will go ahead and tell you that all possible debugging has now been turned off and you can see it actually responded. Now, there are some commands that might take a little bit of time because of the buffer, but overall though, once it actually does, this is one of the favorite commands because it will always show you exactly where you're gonna be typing in. It's really helpful once again to help you out. So those are my top five Cisco commands that I actually end up using on routers and switches whenever I end up touching them. Now, if you wanna actually learn more about Cisco, of course, well, make sure you check out the IT Pro TV site itself. And as well, don't forget to subscribe and press that notification button if you want to see more content like this. Well, that will do it for us. Thank you for watching.